So it's currently 1st of January 2021. I'm here in a small German town with my girlfriend. She's actually lived here before. So I'm going to try to ask her a few questions about this town and also what it's like to live here. Enjoy. Hey babe. Hey. Hey, can I ask you a few questions about you and this town? Yeah. Let's start off with telling the people your name and maybe where you currently live. I'm Tien and I currently live in Berlin in Germany. And we're currently in a small village called Kreitz at the moment. Why are we in Kreitz right now? Um, we're in Kreitz because we are visiting my parents over Christmas and New Year's. And it's just the beginning of January right now. How cold is it here at the moment? I just checked and it was like two or three degrees Celsius. Where exactly is Kreitz and what's the population here? Um, so Kreitz is in the south part of Thuringia, which is one of the 16 federal states in Germany, and it's bordering Saxony as well. Um, we have about 20,000 inhabitants. And what's Thuringia known for? So Thuringia is in the middle of Germany, so in the very center, and it's known to be the green heart of Germany because of all its forests. And what's Kreitz most well known for in your view? Um, so historically Kreitz has been known for its paper production and textile production and in the most recent years I think they've also moved into like biochip um, or microchip production when it comes to economy and I think when it comes to history we have two very beautiful castles. Um, this one is the lower castle called Unteres Schloss and we also have one that is on a mountain which we can check out later. And why did your family primarily choose to live in Kreitz? Um, so we lived in a bigger town or bigger city um, about 30 kilometers from here before. Uh, it's called Gera and um, back then my parents were employed but they wanted to start their own thing and you know moving to this smaller town made it possible to get a really prime spot in the middle of the city or town center um, and it was just right timing and they took a leap of faith to start this whole thing. What do you think is the one main advantage of living here as opposed to living in a larger city like Dresden or Berlin? I think it keeps me grounded. Um, having lived in different parts of the world, coming back to Greiz always gives me this sense of calm and sense of peace. And, um, you know, growing up here was amazing as well because you basically have your whole town as your support system. People just know each other, especially if you're the daughter of a business owner. Um, and you know, when you get lost or when you need help, chances are someone knows you and helps you out. And what do you think is the biggest shortfall of living in Kreitz or a smaller town like this, according to your experience? Um, it was definitely harder to, you know, advance in terms of career. I mean, I, I moved out when I was 18 um, to go study. But that's the first thing, right? You have to move out to a bigger city and be away from your family at a very young age um, to just pursue your um, university studies. And then, of course, certain things are not always accessible here. Um, if you want to go shopping, it's not your place. Uh, we have a few boutiques, but it's not really, you know, for a whole shopping spree. And then things like Asian grocery stores are also not available. But I think in this day and age, you need to, you, know, you can order everything online anyways. Okay, and if you could change one thing about this town, what would it be? Mm, I guess a shopping center would be nice. Like just a place where everyone can just meet up. I mean, post COVID, but you know, it, it kind of is lacking some place where young people can go and hang out and go shopping or go meet friends or go eating like all in one place. I think that would help. Where was your favorite place to go in Kreitz when you were living here when you were younger? Besides your house, of course. And can you kind of describe it a little bit? Um, we're actually heading there right now, so I can show you guys. But basically, I was outside a lot as a kid and we often rode our bikes around the town and we always went down there um, where there's a bit of a water stream going on um, building dams and kind of annoying other people <laughs> by doing so 
but I can show you. So while we're getting there, I do know that Germany and a large part of the EU is kind of respected for its efficient public transport by many people. Um, how do you kind of get around here or how did you get around here in the past and do you think people can happily live and get around here without a car? I mean it's a relatively small town so if you live in the city centre everything is really walkable but uh, once you have to step out and go to another city I think you really need a car. There are buses but they go like every one to two hours. Um, it's not convenient and they also stop after like 7 p.m. or something. So yeah definitely get a car. <laughs> Okay, and you mentioned this was your favorite place in Kites, right? Yeah, um, it's, it was my favorite place in Kites. <clears throat> I went here a lot with my friends. Um, we biked here and we would go down there to kind of build a dam and kind of annoy other people by that. Like several times there were people coming down to us and saying like what the heck are you guys doing and we literally got bricks and built like a brick wall under there stopping the water from going into the river <laughs> there's also this tunnel that was part of many many dares back then so it's a tunnel that um, goes all the way through the town and um, we kind of dared each other how far anyone can go in uh, without a torch and how long it would take until that person comes back out again but yeah it's, it's not sewage water by the way it's uh, <laughs> clean water that just gets diverted into the river so do you believe that there are things that Kites doesn't have that would require you to rely on a slightly larger city for yeah I mean I'm I definitely needed to move out to go to uni so that's the first thing and that's the most important thing I guess um, also career wise what you have here are more like local family businesses or small medium sized uh, enterprises so if you want to pursue an international career then Kleitz is not your place to be and in terms of everyday life I think my parents are pretty comfortable um, they can get everything from the grocery store they can um, do their basic shopping. If they need anything else, they would go to the nearest city, uh, which would be Gera, um, and it's 30 kilometers from here. Um, and I, yeah, I guess in this day and age, you can order anything else um, online, really. And it's, if anything, it's more efficient to order things online here than in Berlin, as per my experience, because the delivery guys actually care to go up to you place and like deliver the package to you as opposed to in Berlin where they just don't even bother to ring your doorbell and drop it off at the nearest packing like packing station well thanks for your time babes um, we have some time here for the next few days is there anything cool that we can check out here that you would recommend well I think we should definitely go up to the upper castle um, over the Schloss which um, is one of the iconic landmarks of Greiz. Um This is actually a pretty cool spot because you see the Unteres Schloss, which is the lower castle, and the Oberes Schloss, which is the upper castle in one sort of frame. Um, yeah, I think most of the upper castle is a museum now. Back then when I was still in like primary school, I had friends living up there in those apartments, and then slowly the city decided to relocate them um, down here so they can I guess preserve the upper castle a bit better. And with the lower castle, which is this yellow one here, right? Yeah. That's um that's still a castle in its entirety, or are there also kind of apartments there at this stage? Um, not apartments. There is like a piano school in there. There's a cafe and a restaurant, and then part of it is also a museum. At this point. Cool. Yeah. Then let's check it out after we grab a snack. Yep. <laughs> the church so this area is kind of like what you would call the Altstadt right or the old part of the yep. town yeah so there's a bridge that divides the Neustadt which is the new part of town and uh, Altstadt which is the old part of town um, as far as I 
C, um, everyone prefers to live in Altstadt. So these are cafes, um, we have the library back there. Um, it's relatively quiet because it's the 1st of Jan and everyone's at home, plus COVID. Um, so it was actually forbidden to um, light fireworks yesterday night. Um, usually on the 1st of Jan you would see like old firecrackers everywhere and trash and stuff, but that's not the case this year. Um, I heard a few people do fireworks, but um, officially it wasn't allowed. So yeah, it's very quiet. <laughs> so usually uh, New Year's Eve is way busier, right? People do fireworks here in this small town too? Yeah, yeah, they really go out um, onto the streets and they light fireworks. I read somewhere that the average German family spends about 300 euros each year on fireworks, which I think is pretty accurate. Um, but yeah, not the case this year. You see those red little wrappers, but not many. Usually the whole place would be littered with that. <laughs> Guess it kind of goes to show how much Germans actually stick to laws and rules. Yeah, if you go there, it's the marketplace. So, um, so that street up. They have um, a market square and every, I think, Tuesdays and Thursdays, they are like vendors selling fruits and vegetables and bread and honey and stuff like that. Are there Christmas markets in this uh, town as well? Yeah, I mean, without COVID there are. Um, it's usually in this area as well and then on the market. Um, but Germany-wide there weren't any Christmas markets this year because of COVID. So that's a bit sucky. But usually like it goes all the way from down there. There are like those little huts going up here um, to where the church is. And then that's like the first part. And the second part would be on the market itself. Can go like this way, which is kind of the mall, but not really. So this is what I mean by lack of mall. Um, this is one of the two malls um, in Greiz. This is the back entrance. But yeah, it looks kind of just residential in my opinion. And if you enter, you have a few shops. I'll show you. Very nice background music. I'm not sure if you need to blur this later. But yeah, the shops in here are like just bistros. There used to be a post office there, but it's closed now. There's PRG, which is the public transport um, company here in the region. So PRG. There's this news agency where you can buy you know, newspapers. You can play the lottery. You can post packages. But yeah, that's the first mall. If you want, we can check out the second mall from the outside at least. Yeah, yeah let's, let's go. do it. Oh, we do have a cinema. So these are the movies that are currently playing. So this is really the inner city area. Um, we have a big drugstore there. We have a shoe store, um, phone store. This is a big Italian cafe, um, but they're always closed over winter time. So I think what they do is they just work in summertime and then during winter they go back to Italy. Yeah, it's so empty, crazy. Yeah, as you can see, everything is quite walkable. Um, you can drive. My dad used to drive me to school. <laughs> I think driving took the exact same time as walking. He still did it. So we approached the second wall, which also has a hotel. <laughs> if you ever want to stay in Greiz, I think that's the only hotel, actually. Um, and I guess it's more catered towards people that, I don't know, hike from town to town and then they need a place to stay. Okay. You have a nice view of the Obere Schloss again from here. Is there a name for this square? Yeah, this is uh, Westernhagenplatz, named after um, a man that was killed back then by the Nazis. So as you can see, there's the hotel, um, three star, very premium. If you want to stay here. Um, this is the mall called Altstadt Galerie, 
which means like old city's gallery but as I said the shops here are more like not that catered towards someone that wants to shop like you can buy um, electric appliances you can get a phone contract you can get a pet what else do we have here oh Erika is going to open which is a grocery store we can't get in right now because it's a public holiday but yeah maybe you can peek in here there's a bit of a chill spot uh, I think they tried by putting like palm trees um, in there but no one ever goes here to chill <laughs> it's like a little inside square but I wouldn't say this is a mall. <laughs> it's definitely really quiet at this time of the year. It's really quiet, yeah. As you can see, big squares dominate the town. <laughs> You'll never struggle to find a parking spot, which is a good thing. Um, but yeah, not sure how worth. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's definitely a struggle to find a parking spot in Berlin. It is, yeah. Usually in, like during Christmas time, we have this big um, Christmas tree. And the town hall kind of they decorate it in a very nice way where the town hall becomes an advent calendar, like a Christmas calendar. It's a thing here in Germany, I'm not sure about other countries, but you have a Christmas calendar with 24 sort of pockets or doors that you can open. And um, yeah, obviously at the end of the calendar, it's Christmas time, which is when you can open your present. But they um, usually do that with the windows of the town hall so they would have numbers on it and then every um, new day they would open another window and they put like a little puppet show up there as well that's a big christmas tree it is big christmas ornaments as well so what's that s on the uh oh, what's it's, that s on the bauble it's sponsored by sparkasse which is one of the main banks I would say in Germany um, they are a bank that has a lot of like has a very long tradition um, my parents use them as well and I think they're one of the most trustworthy banks to Germans that was just a firecracker <laughs> yeah this is the market square you have shops here that have been here for ages so I moved here when I was 10 and then I moved away when I was 18 and for example that shop there the Blumenhaus one um, one side sells poultry and the other side sells um, flowers and apparently it works for them because they're still here um, you have like jewelers here um, and a bunch of shops that are more targeted towards the older population I would say because that's uh, what Kreitz has. If you compare the population age, it's older than the average in Germany. Because obviously all young people move away. All people move back um, to retire here. Yeah, but these shops are all just quite old school work. You can buy uh, knitting stuff here. You can buy shoes, healthy shoes. <laughs> Um, there's a bookstore here which also has existed for ages, um, very cozy bookstore and a bunch of bakeries and cafes where you can just chill if you need even more chill than anywhere than what else you already in have. Yeah, There are a few new shops, like I, I go back every now and then and I'm always surprised to find new shops or new um, entrepreneurs that are trying to make a living here um and even even young people like they open hair salons for example or they open travel agencies just to cater towards uh, the people here and i guess if you're the only one doing it it works um and for some you know this is what they want to do or this is where they want to stay so i respect that <laughs> 